Okay, hey guys, I'm back. I almost fell off this damn sarcophagus when I uh, accidentally touched my uh, controller there, and I was like, no, 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 no. Whoa there. Whoa there, Banjo. Stop pulling his neck. Her neck. Your feathered buddy that you'd brung, you've brung, is useless like a pile of dung. I already knew you were going to say that. But anyway, um, I just want to finish my thought about, you know, people making money on YouTube. Because I used to be more, like, stringent about it. But again, that it's I've come to realize that it's all personal reasons why you want to make money off YouTube. Maybe you just want to make a little bit. Maybe you make want to just stop going to work and make YouTube your job. And I used to have kind of a problem with that kind of thing. Where, like, haha, people are selling t-shirts about them just being stupid and blah, 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 blah. And I won't name drop, but... Uh, there have been some really ridiculously popular people on YouTube that I have pretty much said this person is an idiot and I really don't like them, I really don't like their commentary style, and I really don't like how they're just getting by on dumb humor. I mean, I do dumb humor all the time, but I do like to put forth, like, interesting, thought-provoking things sometimes, like the whole, um, you know, is this really Grunty's castle? Whose castle is this? Who is this person? I like to kind of muse on that kind of thing, but again, that's my own personal thing, and if people want to make money on doing stupid shit, go ahead. You're not taking my money, but I won't support that person, but if there's people out there who want to support those kind of people, and they get a real enjoyment out of it, go ahead, I guess. By the way, it's interesting to note, I never noticed that Kazooie doesn't open the backpack to get out of that backpack. Look at that. She just kind of phases through it. That's weird. Huh. Interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I've just, I've run into some money problems myself recently, so I can now a little bit better understand why people are motivated to make money off YouTube because you don't really need to go out and do a stringent work schedule. You can just have fun with it and you can do funny humor. You can do fun editing effects and whatever you want to do. Make top 10 lists, make spoofs on games, make your own games. Just, um, or not even do games, just do stupid shit like that, that, that series of videos that's come out recently, the vines that are just like five seconds of really well-timed silly humor. I consider that like the silliest of silly humor, but um, I mean, just I just want to say that, guys, that I've become a lot less um, intolerant of people making money on YouTube, because I used to just be like, man, if you make a whole bunch of money off YouTube, you're a dick, and if you're really not in that financial situation where you need to make money, then you just take it away from other people, but now I just kind of worry about my own deal and, you know, all that. Anyway, sorry for that. Grab a jiggy. Ah, anyway. What is your opinion about people making money on YouTube? I, I would really like to know what kind of the general opinion of people are now. Like, I remember a while back it was kind of more of a more of a thing where it's like, oh, you're obviously making, like, I won't, again, I won't name drop, but there is, certain, there is a certain person on YouTube who does video game videos very similar to my own where it's just playing a video game and doing commentary over it. But they're very, quote-unquote, amusing with their face cam. Hey, Banjo, you're looking glum. It must be hard being so dumb. It is kind of difficult. Where am I going? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, but yes, just one thing that I've noticed is becoming very popular among... Let's players or um, video game commentators is the face cam. Everybody's doing the face cam nowadays just to, because this one person became incredibly, incredibly popular. They're, no, they're the number one video game commentator on YouTube right now. And I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm really glad that I don't show my face. First of all, because, you know, the Invisible Gunslinger and all that, but I think if you really need to get by on doing funny faces, then you must not be that interesting if the only reason people are coming by is to see your amusing face. I don't know, I just have a little bit more respect for people who can... Like, like here's a perfect example. Yahtzee. Yahtzee does not show his face. He uses cartoony kind of like graphics. But he has a very good face. I've seen pictures of Yahtzee. He's a very handsome person. And he, if he ever did a Let's Play and did his face, he could probably get a whole bunch of views off that. That's right, by the way. We just did that. Did you see that? That was a split-second timing there. Um, but I have seen some of Yahtzee's... Um, I think it's called Let's Drown Out. I've seen him do Let's Drown Out Just Cause 2, which was very amusing. And, I mean... 
The main thing for me when I watch video game commentators, I don't watch a lot of people because it influences my own way of speaking and all that. And by the way, what we just did here was pointless. I forgot that we were supposed to do this later. Whoopsie. Hmm. We'll just sit here for a second. Anyway, sorry by the way if this video is going on too long if with the ranting, but um, I just want to give my opinion of... It's... If you're an interesting commentator and you have an interesting face and you can pull off interesting um, facial expressions every once in a while, go ahead, I have no problem with that. The problem I have is when people exclusively rely on, oh my god, look at him, it's a scary moment, funny face. That's not interesting to me. I can see people freak out, I don't care. If I want to see somebody freak out, I'll just invite my friends over and point and laugh at them playing Fatal Frame or something, you know? I don't know. Um, when I actually go to watch somebody play a video game, I want them to actually bring a perspective or an idea to the game that I've never seen before. Or I want them to be playing it in a very interesting new way. That's why people like Swordless Link are really interesting, because they know all these game-breaking mechanics. So, that's just my opinion. I've really been musing on what makes a good YouTuber, what makes a good video game commentator, for a long time, pretty much for the whole time I've been on YouTube, but that's my opinion as of right now. But it doesn't matter what my opinion is, because now we need to actually focus on me making an interesting point, which is Freeze Easy Peak is one of it. You know what? It is my second most favorite stage in the game. I just, you'll see why. Try to guess what, if you haven't gotten the hint, I dropped a major hint. Wherever Gobi shows up next is my favorite area. If you played this game before, you know exactly what it is. If you have, if you've played this game before and you can't quite remember where Gobi is, try to guess. We've never, we haven't gotten to that stage yet. I'll, oh wait, whoa, 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 whoa! I almost forgot. I have to read, uh, I have to read uh, what the uh, Nintendo Power says about Freeze Easy Peak. Apparently, by the way, um, the Nintendo Power suggests that we go to Freeze Easy Peak before Gobi's Valley, and I can see why now. Okay, Freeze Easy Peak. Gruntilda says. Though the weather outside is frightful, I know you will enter just to be spiteful, but I'm sure the cold will turn you back. You'll wish you'd worn a parka instead of that pack. I guess as a walrus, you could maybe keep warm. Oh my god. Many tricks are up my sleeve to save yourself. You'd better leave. I already did leave. Okay, where, do, where was I? Um, I'm trying to read two different grunties here. Um, I guess as a walrus, you maybe could keep warm. But you'd have flippers, buck teeth, and a blubbery form, as if you're one to talk. And if you do catch a cold, then here's the scoop. Turn that red sassy bird into hot chicken soup. Oh, that's a good burn. That's a good one. If you do catch a cold, here's the scoop. Turn it into hot chicken soup. Okay, and the description for Freeze Easy Peak is... Winter is perpetually in season on Freeze Easy Peak, but the frigid weather here is so incredibly cold that only polar bears and walruses could call this bleak place home. If the numbing frostbite doesn't get you, the pounding blows of snowballs thrown by snowmen surely will. Interesting. Let's go. Ah, oh, there it is. There's the music. Ho oh, ho, the peak's got another new move waiting for you. If you can find it. Ah, this music. That moon. I like how the moon and the stars just kind of circle around. They don't go lower or higher. They just kind of go in orbit around this area. That's a very pixelized moon. By the way, here's a giant snowman. That's right. Some I can't imagine what kind of monster built that snowman. You know what? No, I know what that is. I know exactly what that is. That is a modified version of the Statue of Liberty. Because remember, this is a post-apocalyptic nuclear area, so we're in nuclear winter right now, okay? That, that huge thing, there used to be the Statue of Liberty. You maniacs! You blew it up! You really did it this time! You gave the Statue of Liberty a corn cob pipe! You monsters! But even the music here just makes you feel cold. It's very Christmassy. I hate to say Christmassy because everybody is like, oh, winter is obviously Christmas. But no, this does feel kind of like jingle bells, you know? Anyway, let's go on this uh, 
This Eskimo's paradise. Here we are. Oh my god, this is the funniest thing ever, looking back. I remember this now. <laughs> That's right, everybody. We've got polar bears. Polar bear children who weep uncontrollably. <laughs> oh, look, they've even got a picture of the snowman. Okay, let's talk to you. What's up? I mean, it can't be that bad in here. I mean, look, you've got, um, one room, um, with a table and a chair. You don't have a bed or a refrigerator or anything, but you've got a chair and a table and a mumbo skull, which, well, I actually kind of took, but, uh... Where's our presents? Our dad, Boggy, said he was fetching them. He's been gone ages. Wait. Ooh, that was a terrible voice. Despise children. Beat the shit out of these kids. You want presents? Here's a prison. Here's a knuckle sandwich. It wouldn't be Christmas without a few black and blues. I like how two of these polar bears are wearing, like, shorts, but then this other one gets, like, a nightcap or a dunce cap or something. What makes you so special? Okay, whatever. Okay, fine. Cry your little crying tears at your own time. I've got a father to find. This is like some Homeward Bound shit. It's like, our father's gone. We'd never get back, but wherever could he be? He's dead. Hey, cool. All those polar bears get to be Batman now. Uh, my stomach aches. I shouldn't have eaten that shiny thing. Someone help poor Boggy. Quick, children, run down here and save your father. He's eaten something shiny. I didn't I didn't know that polar bears were naturally attracted to shiny things. Okay. Okay. Bear to bear, I just gotta say, you're gonna be okay, man. Somebody get me a medic. Okay. We're, we're gonna do CPR on you guys. One, two, three. <clears throat> okay, that didn't work. One, two, three. <clears throat> mouth to mouth. <clears throat> oh, crap, I can't do mouth to mouth. Our noses are too big. <clears throat> I'm not gonna let you die, damn it. One, two, three. <clears throat> okay, fine, you're dead. Bye bye. Whatever. Oh, well, that was magnificent. By the way, apparently Kazooie is part Spider-Man. Look at this angle that we're at. That is a 90 degree angle. That is more than a 90 degree angle. Look at this. This is almost straight up horizontal right there. Oh wait, 90 degree angle is horizontal. This is like a 40, at least a 50 degree angle. Sorry, it's been a long time since I studied trigonometry. This is a fat snowman too. Whee! Maybe more like a 35 degree angle. By the way, did you hear that ominous laughter? Look at this. That's right. We've got snowman, everybody. That is a scary laughter. Listen to that. That sounds like the kind of laughter somebody would, like, have before they put, like, hypodermic needles in bubble gum, you know? Er, 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 er. I'm going to mess up children's lives forever with my snowballs. <sighs> now tell me this doesn't kind of feel Christmassy. Can can you not hit me here? You can't hit me here. That's hilarious. I'm going to take a little break now. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <sighs> Delicious. <laughs> 